Julia Toriansky. Julia is the web mistress of bravetheworld.com, which is a cool new site that you should check out, as well as a very cool YouTube channel. Uh, thanks so much for being with us, Julia. Thank you. So, I don't want to uh, use the cliche kind of uh, where did you come from, how did you get to this philosophy question, but I want specifics. I want an interesting uh, <laughs> life story kind of thing. So not necessarily who did you read to become the kind of philosophical thinker you are now, but what life experiences shaped your mind to where it is at this point? Um, definitely having had my family be from for, former Soviet Union, so um, that just bred a uh, kind of inherent rejection of socialism for me. Also, recently, well, I was a libertarian for a while, and recently I became an anarchist probably about a year ago, and that all had to do with my lifestyle change. I had a major lifestyle change and my philosophy had to follow it. It was a very natural, organic kind of realization for me. Yeah, it, it kind of, yeah. I think, I think that happens for a lot of people, they just don't realize it. Sure, sure, definitely. So when you look at Russia today, do you see progress or do you see there's always going to be some kind of plutocracy and the only way to solve it is to delete the government? <laughs> There's, there's no progress in Russia. Um, we we have all of the natural resources. We have we are the one, one of the most richest countries in the world. In that sense, look how big we are. We have everything, uh, you know, coal, mining, oil, uh, wood, like uh, literally everything, gold, silver. And where does that money go? Sure. So and that's and the people, you know, there's a bit of an awakening in the country, but not enough and the people are just being stepped on and most people don't care including some of my family members people are too poor to care people turn to other things and distract themselves and it's going to take several generations to breed out that mentality and i'm not that hopeful for russia unfortunately i've always found it kind of interesting when you look at wealth in russia the uh and in the former Soviet Union, when you look at the transition from uh, communist rule to whatever it is now, uh, a lot of economists would say capitalism, but we're smarter than that. The money is in the hands of the same people who were ruling the Soviet Union. And I, I understand, I, I don't understand why people don't see exactly what's happening there. Well, well, it's not a communism capitalism thing. It's that the people with the power maintain the power. Corruption is corruption, and that's what people say, you know, that support Putin. Oh, Putin got rid of the oligarchs. Yay! He huh. replaced them with new oligarchs. I mean, it, he got rid of, you know, someone else's friends and brought, invited his friends over. It's... Why is that better? <laughs> exactly. Oh, God. Ex it's just... Yeah. So, you are a very stringent proponent of Bitcoin. And you've also, uh, you recently interviewed my good friend Cody Wilson uh, of, Dis of Defense Distributed uh, with his 3D printing of guns, etc. It's easy to look at 3D printing guns as a tool of revolution. But is Bitcoin also a tool of revolution? Is it more effective? Uh, what do you think? Way more. Way more. Huh. I think, well, Andreas put it really well in his speech at the Bitcoin Expo in Toronto. Well, he said... Um, the the people you know the control of money used to be power now m money is sovereignty and there's a very a thin distinction there right because bitcoin is inherently uh powerful as an idea and as a tool and it's more than money it's more than investment it's more than anything people uh, kind of pigeonhole it to be it's it's an idea. It is what it is, and it gives power back to you know peer to peer transactions. And uh, it, it it in the future it's going to create micro ecosystems of symbiotic ecosystems online, and it's going to bypass all the middlemen. And you know this is the institutions, and this is the dollar, and whatever else we subscribe to right now. And 
Bitcoin and everything else that comes with it, all the other cryptocurrencies and, you know, Ethereum is an interesting one too. It's up here. Like they're not even, they have nothing to do with each other anymore. And to try and put them on the same level, it's just pandering and it's just stepping backwards instead of forwards. Sure, sure. I mean, that's a beautiful idea. So why is it important to inhabit your philosophy? You have a, you have a very interesting interview series uh, entitled I Am Anarchy. Why is it important to be anarchy and not necessarily just think of it as a political, political philosophy, but as a life philosophy, a, a life experience? Well, thank you for understanding that. <laughs> That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, well, even my, I'm going to be speaking at Porkfest soon and I'll be talking about living your philosophy. And it's just, I guess it goes back to the way I became an anarchist and it was a total lifestyle change and a mind state, like a state of mind. Like even with you know my basic bitches, Bitcoin bitches video, you know, I use that as like an like a description of a state of mind, not necessarily a person. Same with anarchy, you know, and being an anarchist. It's just, it's the way that uh, you interact with the world, not necessarily a very specific, you know, philosophy subscribed to. Because there's so many, there's so many forks in philosophy, right? And the interesting, actually, one person I really admire for he gets a lot of flack. This guy, uh, Amir Taki, I also interviewed him for this series. And he doesn't, he doesn't, you know, put himself in a mold of being an anarchist, but he definitely lives that lifestyle, which he admits. And whether you agree with the guy or not, I've never met, I've never met anybody who literally lives exactly what he preaches and does. So that is kind of the direction I'm trying to move towards and trying to get people to move towards. It's, it's nice to sit in, you know, a classroom and read these philosophies and us, you know, follow these thinkers. But if you're at the end of the day just doing what you've always done, I mean, you have every right to do what you want to do, but it's more than that, you know? Sure, sure. Uh, I believe through some of my journalistic research that you are an artist, is that correct? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it brings up the important point, though, uh, or at least for me, I, f I think it's important, and I don't think it's touched on enough. Uh, how is art a contributor to, to human freedom, and how is art part of a robust uh, anarchist philosophy? I love, I love these questions. Um, okay. If you're going to call me an artist, I guess I'll roll with that. Okay. As an artist, <laughs> as an artist um, I, I always felt a little bit constrained in this liberty movement from, you know, I hang out with a lot of, like, the Mises crew, and they're very, you know... Um, economics, math, like very straight and narrow kind of. Sure. Uh, and I'm very different, you know. I might not be as smart as them in that regard, but I think about things on a larger scale, like a big picture. Um, I guess th even if you watch my videos, you know, they're not, I'm not just talking at you. I try to include a little bit of an artistic style to, to the message I'm sending. And... You know, it's lost on a lot of people, and maybe rightly so, because not everyone thinks that way. But I think art is what stays behind. You know, art is what stays behind. And art is... <laughs> art feeds society, and society feeds art. And it's this beautiful kind of symbiotic relationship between the two. And it's enriching to your message. And... That's why, you know, just to make a point, Ayn Rand's Alice Shrugged, that's art. It's fiction. It's a work of fictional um, literature, which is art. Now, that message would have not been as effective as if she wrote, you know, an essay. Sure. Okay? So that's my point. Everyone does things differently, but... I, Art is very, very important. Very, very important. And I think we're losing it a little bit. I, it used to be so important, you know, look at the Renaissance and um, any ancient societies, any, you know, any, like, I'm, I'm losing the point on myself now because it's just incomprehensible to me that just recently, maybe in the past 50 years, we kind of lost our appreciation for things of beauty and things that may not be, 
you know, black and white. Sure. No, I mean, I can definitely see that. And, you know, I, I feel like art is kind of a, a, I want to say physical, but it's more just an abstract. It's an iteration it's of... the realm of appearances, right? Well, so it's true, but it's it also it's an iteration of spontaneous order. Yeah, and, and that's what, like, art is ideas, right? Sure. Art is ideas at the end of the day. And it's in it's in the realm of appearances, and it's you know visual often, or or musical, and that is what leaves an impression long term, in my opinion. And again, going back to Miyataki, he talks about you know programming is art, coding is art. You can look at a language um, that you write down for a program, and it's art. People don't think of it that way, but we need to start thinking of, thinking of it that way. And you'd be surprised, especially in the Bitcoin community. Just yesterday, I went to Decentral in Toronto, and I was talking to somebody. They're starting up like a Bitcoin startup, and I'm not going to mention it because it's still under wraps. But they said, first and foremost, this is an expression of art. And I'm like, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, definitely. No, I, I think I think that is a very good point. I think it's I think it's true. Well, uh, Julia, thank you so much for being on, and uh, everybody go check out uh, BraveTheWorld.com and uh, the YouTube channel, which I believe is just YouTube.com/slash BraveTheWorld. Channel Brave the World channel. Brave the World channel. Perfect. <laughs> okay. All right. Follow me on Twitter. Harass me on Twitter at Brave the World. And I'm on Facebook, too. And thank you very much for the awesome questions. This was awesome. Great stuff. <laughs> it's a pleasure. All right. Have Bye. a great day. Bye.